if I let me know, uh, then we need to start. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good morning and good evening and good afternoon to everyone um, who's joining us from all around the world. We're so excited for you to be here. Um, welcome on behalf of Imam Medics International and Sadiq International Virtual University to our session on mentoring. And we're so excited to have our faculty here um, from India joining us. Um, what I'll do is I'll pass it over to Dr. Tabassum Zehra um, from the SIVU team who will be introducing the session. Um, and again, if you need anything, then the chat function is available. Um, but please uh, have a great session and, and um, Thank you once again for joining us. <laughs> thank, thank you. you uh, thank you, Shifa. Um, thank you all for joining. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, assalamu alaikum from um, SIVU. Thank you. Um, today, uh, this session is going to be held with respect to uh, mentoring in COVID-19 era. And this is a very important, you know, um, uh, very important topic, very important discussion that's going to go around. And we hope that all of your participation is going to be very interactive. We expect that every of one of you is engaged and uh, uh, get benefit of uh, this important uh, workshop. We have some uh, very important and eminent uh, facilitators for this workshop. Before introducing them, um, I would also like to introduce myself because I am uh, uh, Dr. Tabasuk Zera, as Shifa has already mentioned, and uh, I am working as uh, assistant professor in Aar Khan University, uh, Pakistan, and I'm the director of Master of Health Professions Education program over there. Um, so, uh, uh, before handing over the workshop to the facilitators, let me just walk you through their profile. Dr. Farzana Mehdi, who is the Vice Chancellor of ERA University, Lucknow, India. She is an astute educationist. She has helped establish ERA's Lucknow Medical College and Hospital, along with other constituent colleges of allied health sciences. Uh, she is also the Director of Academics of the ERA's Lucknow Medical College and the Academic Dean. Uh, she has completed her FEMA Fellowship as well, and uh, has many uh, presentations in various national and international conferences. Her latest venture is to exploit molecular tools and techniques to establish a new healthcare approach based on personalized medicine for the betterment of society. Um, Dr. Fazana has been a pillar of strength to patient care in these trying times of the pandemic. Uh, with her, we have uh, Dr. Nirmala. Uh, who is a pharmacologist, professor in pharmacology at ERA's uh, Lucknow Medical College. Um, and she is uh, a professor and head, head of a uh, department of pharmacology and therapeutics and has continued as professor emeritus. She is president South Asian College and affiliate of the College of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology. Um, and uh, she is a recipient of many awards for her research in the field of pharmacology. Um, she has also been a coordinator of medical education unit of KEM hospital. And um, of course, she is a very eminent and um, uh, prominent person of FEMUR as well. And uh, she has also been the co-director of the Regional Institute of Foundation of Advances in Medical Education and Research. And uh, uh, with, her, with these two prominent personalities, we also have Dr. Suchita Dandekar, who is uh, an MHPE graduate uh, from University of Kiel, UK. She is currently professor of biochemistry at Iras Lucknow Medical College. She is also an adjunct faculty at the Manipal Academy of Health Education. She was professor and head department of biochemistry at the Seat GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai for 31 years. Dr. Dandikar is personally global faculty at FEMER. So, um, and she's also an active member of the medical education unit and an institute biochemist. She has been a keynote speaker at many conferences and has conducted numerous workshops in the field of medical education. So we have these three prominent uh, medical educationists as well as, you know, um, experts in their field. And they will be leading you through uh, this important topic of mentorship, walking you through the mentor mentor relationship and, um, uh, talking more about this, I will hand over uh, the mic to Dr. Farzana Mehdi to please start and continue uh, with uh, the session. Thank you. Dr. Farzana, over to you. Yeah. Where's the mic? 
So a very good afternoon and good morning. It's indeed my privilege to be uh, presenting this webinar come workshop today. And I'm very grateful to the platform uh, which has been given by IMI and SIVU. And uh, Professor Zaidi has been very kind enough to first of all, include us in this uh, very privileged uh, group of medical educationists from around the world. And uh, this was his, one of his dreams to bring together uh, medical educationists from around the globe on one platform to share and distribute knowledge, which he thinks and all of us think that it should be part and parcel for all, all of us. So today, as you all know, uh, that uh, the topic for the webinar and the workshop is um, mentoring in the COVID era. So just to give you a ins little insight as to how we came uh, about uh, and how we decided to uh, you know, organize a webinar on this topic. So first of all, I would say that as a mother, when the when COVID-19 set in, in, the, in India in the month of March, all the colleges were abruptly shut down and the students were sent back home. And my son, who was doing his undergraduate course from Mumbai, he also came. And uh, at that time, we thought that it's going to be around for maybe 15 days, 21 days, it was said that the complete lockdown is going to take place. And then he'll be going back and everything is going to be normal. But unfortunately, things continued. And one lockdown after another lockdown, after another lockdown, it went on and on. And in the beginning, as everyone had planned, we just tried to you know, plan and execute our, you know, start the online teaching without, uh, you know, giving it a proper shape and, uh, you know, structure. So we thought that it's going to be there for one or two months and then the summer break comes and definitely after the summer break, everything is going to be normal. But things, you know, as you all know, you know, went to the other side and uh, the teaching, the training, could not return to the normal. So during that time, I could see my son uh, coming up with a lot of confusion, lot of, lot of issues he had in his mind. And at times he would look so lost and at times he would attend uh, his classes, but then sometimes he's, he was not very keen because sitting in that same room, he used to say sitting in the same room, one room, I'm doing my, classes the whole day, I'm sleeping in the same room. And then when we, as a, because ours is a health professional university, when we, I tried to, you know, get information about the teaching training, which was being done online already. But then once we started with the review around one and a half months after the implementation, what we came uh, to know about, and I had not known that came uh, because we had not, uh, you know, faced that kind of a situation. The, the problems which the students were going through at that time was that students are coming to from various backgrounds, small cities, big cities, uh, and a place where uh, uh, Kashmir, where, uh, you know, the internet facilities was not very good. So the students coming from those places, they had multiple issues. They were not able to connect. They were not able to, uh, you know, join the classes. So they were getting all the more tense. And to add to, to that, some of the students coming from very poor backgrounds were not having these facilities of smartphones. This was also a reality, which, which came as a shock to us. And then when we tried to talk to the representatives of the classes, because to take the feedback, this was what which we came to know. And the dejection, the 
so much of uh, you know uh, not feel uh, frustration and uh, not being able to you know study sitting in at home going through so much uh, the students were devastated at times uh, in the beginning when so what we did because since already we were running our mentorship program which was it as it runs in any university uh, i would not boast that it was over the edge or something very grand and great but then what we thought that let us come together uh, we talk to our faculty we talk to the class representatives and with them we said let us now try to uh, you know rebuild it and uh, you know reorganize restructure our mentoring program and see if we could be uh, with we if we could provide help to those students because what we thought that learning is one thing doing the course you know studying is one thing uh, now the uh, the the problem which was being faced was that the slowly students had some of the students had started going into phases of depression or uh, they were not uh, you know and then slowly we knew that if we are not going to take things in into our hands this could lead to other serious issues so what we did we went about trying to talk to the class trying to be with the students trying to understand uh, their uh, situations their problems and then whatever we could do to uh, to the best of our capabilities we tried to help them out sort the problems supposing they were not able to do uh, connect online we would what we would do we would send the entire uh, you know powerpoint presentations along with the reading materials because some of the students had not even taken their books the entire books they could not take because uh, all of a sudden they had to leave and they did not think and nobody guided also as to whether they had to take all the books or not so we had to share the study material we had to share the powerpoint uh, you know presentations and then slowly what we found out that yes now things are at least uh, you know coming back to a little normal so uh, with these things in mind when uh, we started uh, the this uh, cbu platform was uh, started what we said uh, we uh, you know we asked uh, dr zaidi that uh, we also would like to present a webinar then we were thinking that was what topic uh, should we take up and since we had worked in this topic and we had also you know uh, written a paper and uh, communicated it at that time for the wellness of the students um so what we thought that why not uh, share our experiences uh, with in this platform which is global and we have uh, you know uh, faculties from all around the world so uh, with this brief uh, we approached him and we got this platform and um, so today we are going to be uh, with you we would want to make the ses session as interactive as possible and uh, so to begin with this this you uh, you can see these are the learning objectives so at the end of the session the participants shall be able to explain role played by mentoring in health professions education discuss problems posed during covid-19 era define responsibilities of the teachers as a mentor during covid-19 share experiences educational field in educational field research and practice and reflect on the mentorship skills using self assessment forms with this i would like to uh, hand over uh, the mic to dr neema and she will take the session forward Thank you, Dr. Fazano. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, before we discuss uh, mentoring in COVID-19 uh, era, let us revisit basics 
of uh, of uh, mentioning odyssey the epic uh, poem written by homer portrays a character that character is the main it's called as mentor and mentor is a close friend of a king odysseus when odysseus uh, leaves for a war he bestowed upon uh, uh, bestowed upon mentor the responsibility of upbringing of his son telly uh, telemachus and uh, mentor then uh, not only trained uh, telemachus in uh, traditional subjects but also empowered him with uh, virtue integrity responsibility uh, developing and molding his character he became guide philosopher and friend of uh, telemachus and thus this proper noun later on became a common noun for those who played similar role mentoring uh mentoring exists uh, existed in health profession education for many years but it has gained popularity as a formal concept since last 20 25 years if you think for a while of mentor or mentors in your own life you will understand the pivotal role they have played in your professional and personal development as a health professionals we have various roles to play we are teachers we are clinicians we are problem solvers we are acad- uh, administrators examiners so and so forth and sometimes we have wear all these caps at one time and the this our uh, environment is competitive and close so the new entrant or the inexperienced juniors they are not very clear about these roles they find it very difficult to select their career when there are lots of options are available and they need some networking in the field of interest mentoring provides them timely appropriate desired uh, uh, guidance towards this career selection or for networking and helps facilitates the decision making by the students actually these three words teachers coach and mentor they focus on certain different uh, areas of individuals learning but they may merge and the short term uh, the focus on the areas of uh, knowledge and skill gain by the teacher may undergo transition as a coach imparting some interpersonal abilities addressing to the specific skills and over a period it may blossom into a mentor wherein that mentor inculcates the professionalism ethics attitudes thus developing uh, the, the, the personality of the person it is a matter of time round uh, uh, which takes place it's not a short term but a long term one and the, it encompasses not just the skills and competency but various other attributes as well and thus uh, mentoring do involve the teaching and coaching but apart from that there are other roles like counselor parent figure source of advice supporter even a sounding board for concerns regarding teaching the mentoring relationship is considered as a type of human development in which one individual invest personal knowledge energy time in order to help the another individual to grow and develop and improve to become the best and most successful that is a primary but this relationship is bidirectional and the role of mentees in this can't be ignored thus it is a process which goes over a period it starts with initiation where which is a short the uh, last for short time where the commitments are gained and the objectives and expectations are set it then undergoes tra- transition to cultivation wherein the relationship ripens and there the fulfillment of those objectives takes place and it ends with a separation 
when the mentee becomes self-reliant and when the objectives are achieved. If the separation takes place very early, prematurely, then there arises the feeling of abandonment or resentment, and then the relationship starts breaking. But it can later on go in a different way, that is redefinition, because then, uh, uh, which lasts for an indefinite period in some cases, where the hierarchy between the mentors and mentees either reduces or it becomes, they are totally disappeared. In the literature, you will find varied models of uh, mentorship. There may be traditional dyadic, or for one mentee, there are multiple mentors, or there may be an external mentor or trans model, as it is called, where you may not have the experienced mentor in the field to the recent one as team mentoring or interprofessional mentoring model. They're also based on the forms used. It may be peer to peer model, it may be senior to junior, or it could be reverse mentoring. The juniors, they are mentoring seniors, or it could be networking. It, there are different modes of delivery also. Face-to-face -face we know, but like it can go into the distance mentoring and today's time it is a virtual mentoring. And it, there, there may, it could be at the stage of career of the mentors and mentees. But what leads to effective mentoring? It is the intentionality, the commitment to regular and systematic di dialogue about specific issues in a structured, disciplined way. Collegiality. Both mentors and mentee respect each other as colleagues in a spirit of trust and transparency and sometimes confidentiality. And one has to remember, as I told about the role of mentee, initiative by the mentee. The agenda is initiated and driven by the person or the group for whom the mentoring arrangement is designed. I request Dr. Sucheta to take over. Thank you, Nima. Whenever we are asked to be a part of a program, there are some thoughts that enter our head. One of them, I'll be very frank, it's happened to me also. I always think, I have thought at that time, what's in it for me? The WIIFM. And why not? I'm a fan of Ayn Rand's virtue of selfishness. So, there's nothing wrong in thinking, well, how would it benefit me if I were a part of a program? So nevertheless, I want you to think of ways in which not only students benefit, but also how the faculty will benefit from mentoring. Just take a minute and gather your thoughts and then we'll take it up forward from there. So this is what I thought of. And of course, I read the literature and I collated uh, some points here. And I felt that for students, uh, mentoring will increase engagement and it will also help learning. It will deal with the lack of continuity in the uh, clinical courses because the student will be able to approach a mentor and find out what can I do? It reduces stress and increases self-efficacy. And it will also, especially in the case of residents, promote work performance and research productivity. And last but not the least, the students will be able to network themselves in their field of interest. For the faculty, what will happen? It will be an opportunity to share experiences and wisdom. It will give personal gratification and it will be a way in which you will give back to the students. And because all this is there in place, there will be career satisfaction. The faculty will also develop professional attributes, empathy, communication skills, decision-making. There are so many aspects that, you know, leadership roles, are so many aspects that faculty can hone when you are a part of this kind of a program. And when you are part of this program and you start doing well, you start appreciating not just yourself, but everyone else around you you will earn recognition. That just goes, obviously. So the beneficiaries of mentoring, uh, who are they? Well, how will it all occur? 
you have the mentee there and you have you. When the two of you are in a very good win-win kind of a relationship and a happy situation, you will make magic. And when you start working together, have good research collaborations, have, see to it that you find out newer ways of patient care, your academics improves. And because of that, your department improves. When your department improves, it has uh, an effect on the institution. And when the institution does well, and it is able to promote a certain amount of uh, their well-being, the, the community also starts uh, benefiting from all the fruits of the labor. So what started as a seed will uh, sprout out and become a plant. And that is the reason why it will really, uh, nurturing a good mentoring relationship is important. However, there are many myths about mentoring. And they, uh, let me tell you, they're just myths, but you, uh, we need to look at them or we need to think about them. The first one is, is that mentoring is a one-way street. Another one, or some other people could think that mentoring uh, has to be face-to-face. -face. Some others could think that, oh my God, it's so time consuming. Yet others will have expectations are this, will think that expectations are the same for everyone. Yet others will feel that you have to be junior and the mentor has to be a senior. <laughs> there are some friends of mine who think that mentoring is too complicated and you need only one mentor at a time that you cannot have multiple mentors. I'm telling you, this is what, what we've, I've also found from conversations with my friends. And yet there are some others who will feel that, sorry, that mentoring relationships happen on their own. They just sprout out of the blue. Let me tell you that some part, there is truth in some parts. However, they are all shades of gray. So with that, hang, in, hang on with, with these thoughts. And we want you to now help us with some scenarios and some work. What do I want all of you to do? And Shifa is gonna help us with that. We will divide you into six breakout rooms. There will be one scenario per person and per room. Discuss with your peers in 10 minutes, the specific difficulties as related to the given situation. Evolve the solutions to the questions posed. And then we will, Shifa will bring us back to this main room and we will present uh, these scenarios in the plenary session. What I want you to do is, you will have to elect a leader to steer the discussion, a presenter to report in the plenary, and a timekeeper who's going to help the group to adhere to the timing. Please volunteer for these roles in your respective groups. The discussion time within your group is 10 minutes and your time starts now. Shifa, the platform is all yours. Thanks so much. So I'm going to uh, open the breakout rooms and then um, we'll shuffle everyone in. So join from now, right?
So everyone that's still in the main session, please join the rooms that I have assigned you to, and then we'll meet you back in, in about 10 minutes. So you should see a prompt uh, on your device. Okay, welcome, Mr. Asghar Javed. Uh, I see that you have just joined. Uh, we're moving into breakout rooms to do a special portion of the um, presentation. I'll uh, prompt you to join one of the breakout rooms and you can join one of the scenarios. And that's true for all else who are in the, um, in the uh, main room. Right now we're just waiting. We have br breaking out into different rooms. Um, so that's to, um, uh, yep, okay, perfect. Dr. Tiwari, if you can also join your breakout room. Um, Shima uh, Shirozan, if you can also join your breakout room. And um, Dr. Rashid Mahmoud, if you can also join, please. Mariam Allah, they're waiting for you in room five. Thank you. Um, hello to everyone in the in the um, main room. We're actually in uh, breakout rooms now. So what I'll do is assign you and we're going through um, scenarios. Um, so So Mr. Ashish, thank you for joining us. If you can please go into your breakout room, Mr. Asghar Javed, um, uh, Shima Shirozan, they're all waiting for you in your, in your respective breakout rooms. Dr. Mirza Karar Ali. Yes, uh, welcome Dr. Excuse Mirza. Me. If you can please um, uh, join the breakout room. Um, and we're undergoing a, um, a breakout session. Um, Excuse me, Jane, should are... uh, you explain? If I, why the yeah. people are leaving from this group? Uh, Dr. Malazan, we're in the main room. Everyone is in a breakout room. Uh, 
that has been assigned to them. So you would have to go into the breakout room to do the sessions uh, in smaller groups, and then we'll come back here after. So Ms. Shima Shirozen, uh, they will explain the task to you when you go into the breakout room. And uh, Baha El Din as well. Task, excuse me. Yes. Uh, which tasks? So if you go into the breakout room, do you see the, the option to go into the breakout room that I assigned you to? I've just moved you to a breakout room. If you can go there, um, they're going through a scenario, a, a participatory activity. Okay, no matter. Uh, Dr. Rashid Mahmoud, can you go into your breakout room?
Dr. Anuja, um, uh, your session is okay to be um, brought back into the main session? Oh, hold on. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I am back, but uh, my participants are still waiting. I think you can just send them a prompt. I told them that at the bottom of the screen, they can see the leave and they would be automatically in the main room. Could okay. you please send a prompt to that room, ma'am? Sure. And uh, ma'am, the presenter from the group, uh, this particular scenario, that will be the scenario three, is Medha, Dr. Medha. Right, ma'am? Perfect. <laughs> Um, I see Mr. Uh, Fahim Nanjiani has just joined. Thank you for joining us back in the main session. We're just finishing up um, in all the other sessions and, and um, we'll have everyone meet back here in a few moments. Um, William, uh, oh, sorry, welcome, uh, Mariam Najafi. I see that you've just joined. We're just waiting on um, the breakout sessions to be finished and, and for everyone to join the main session again. Uh, Dr. Zeba, your um, session is uh, finished as well. Yes. Um, I, I've asked the participants to return to the main room. 
Perfect. I've ended the, that 10 minutes of session. Perfect. I'll just get this last person to uh, join us back here as well. Um, Dr. Sonia, your session is done too. Okay. Yes, ma'am, it's over. And uh, we've got Dr. Atit who will be the presenter. Mute, we have to and we have to change the video, stop the video here. Yeah. Then we can move on. Hello, Shifa. Hello. Yeah, so how are the all the rooms going on? Yeah, uh, perfect. I think um, everyone is just being invited um, uh, Back. to join again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they are all joining back to the larger room. Perfect. Okay, okay. We're almost back to everyone, uh, everyone here. I don't know, they will come up. So group one, who is going to present? I think it's uh, Dr. Asghar Javed who's raising his hand. Am I right? Uh, yes, okay. uh, madam. I'm Dr. Asghar Javed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, our, our, scenario, our scenario was uh, that uh, one... Dr. Javed, just wait for a moment. Let all the participants join back in the main room. Okay. So that okay. we can uh, have all of them. So, so Dr. Shifa, once everybody joins back, just give us a signal so that we can just begin with the scenario one. Sure. Okay, I think we have everyone. Yeah, okay. So now we're moving on, on to scenario one. Can I just have it? In the yeah, no, no, no. So let the scenario be there. I have to read it. Huh? 
first scenario I've uh -huh. read. So now for all the participants who are in different rooms, they we welcome you back once again into this main room. And I'm going to read very quickly scenario one because we have to discuss six cases. So scenario one is that Dr. Javed after internship joins in the surgery department as a resident. He learns on the first day that he is deputed for COVID-19 duty for the next six months in another COVID-19 designated hospital. He's a little disappointed, but he joins and undergoes a two day induction course. He realizes in the ward that he has to work in a multidisciplinary team, which consists of senior supervisors from cardiology and psychiatry and peers from gynecology, dermatology and medicine. He's anxious about how he shall be able to work in such a heterogeneous group. He laments that he now has to suffer loss of six months of his precious training in surgery. He's convinced that this work he is not going to uh, benefit uh, from in future. So he loses his interest in the work slowly and starts re remaining more and more aloof, engrossed in his own thoughts. So this was scenario one. And the que questions which we had put up, they were, what is the problem which Javed is facing? What can be done so that Javed shall be able to cope up with the situation? Who should accept the responsibility to mentor Dr. Javed? So I would like to invite the reporter from uh, Dr. Asfar Javed himself, <laughs> Javed, <laughs> so uh, the man in person. So he is going to share uh, the answers from the group one. Over to you, Javed. Uh, thanks a lot for giving me a chance to express my uh, answers for this uh, scenario. Uh, the problem uh, uh, the house officer is facing is the fear of getting COVID infection uh, during uh, management of the patient in the COVID ward. So this was the fear of uh, getting uh, COVID infection. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, 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 of course, you are, you are very, very right. That is the first thing which comes to the mind. And uh, uh, we, uh, what can be done uh, so that he may be able, uh, it is the um, uh, preparation of the, uh, that uh, doctor before sending him to the uh, COVID yes, yes. but uh, the knowledge about the infection prevention and uh, control, uh, he should know the all the uh, PPEs, uh, personal protective equipment uh, yes. used, and also uh, he must know the all the standard procedures, uh, uh, precautions, standard precautions to cope with this uh, type of um, uh, uh, infection during treatment of the patient. So this is the knowledge which should be given by the infection control nurses and uh, infection control team of that institution yes. to do that. This is the second answer. And uh, okay. who should accept the responsibility to mentor Dr. Javed? This is a tricky question, but uh, because he is a mm -hmm. uh, surgical oriented house officer, uh, he should be uh, tactfully uh, guided that there should be a, a person who should have a knowledge on all disciplines like the ICU consultant who knows mm. many things about the uh, medicine, surgery and even uh, post-surgical uh, things. So he can be a good mentor for uh, this uh, doctor in the uh, ward. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Javed. That was very well put. And uh, uh, just you have tried to cover a lot of points, but uh, just one or two things which uh, I would like to add here uh, that uh, since now what we thought that since he's been going to the other hospital, so first of all, his uh, you know supervisor or the HOD from his own college at the time that when he was being sent for this duty, he could have 
try to explain the situation and try to uh, you know uh, play a role of a mentor so that he uh, he becomes um, he's uh, uh, you know uh, he's not uh, having so many fears and the second uh, what i can say that once he goes to the new college there also uh, as you very rightly said that he can uh, the infection control team then they can give you the training for how to don and doff the ppe gear so at that point also during that um, before uh, before that uh, uh, they join that uh, you know the duty uh, they they have to have an induction program because we in in era we are having an induction program where all these uh, you know problems are tackled and the student is trying uh, is being uh, counseled and being told about how he is going to perform his duties and if he has anything uh, problems in his mind he can talk so there also you know the trainer or, or the supervisor can become one of the mentors so he can have multiple mentors and at the same time because now what is happening since he is having people from cardiology uh, and uh, you know the seniors are not being allowed to go inside the ward so now the leadership has come down to uh, the level of uh, junior faculty members so the juniors uh, those faculty members should also be mentored by their hods because now inside the ward they are the ones who are in charge of the entire uh, you know clinical uh, uh, observation so this uh, mid level faculty members should also be trained by mentors and uh, which uh, which is going to help them uh, you know gain their leadership qualities so with these things uh, uh, i think so uh, we have uh, you know uh, just uh, now we move on to the scenario 2 and neema will be uh, able to take you hello uh, so i will uh, i will read the scenario 2 in uh, short, uh, briefly that dr munira is a professor in biochemistry and in charge of mentorship program the face to face meetings of mentors and mentee as per schedule used to occur earlier and whenever needed by the mentees but with this now they have become telephonic or virtual and the, there were lot of concerns expressed by the mentors as listed over here first is the confidentiality of the conversation secondly the mentees were anxious and upset about the situation they appeared isolated unable to focus on the ongoing lectures and they were worried about acquiring the clinical skills and online assessments also and mentors now expecting some tips from dr munira and there are three issues the mentors are, uh, uh, are asking her to give her the tips upon one is the how students emotion to be dealt with how can the mentees be kept motivated how can the mentors help the mentees to achieve their learning goals and uh, therefore in this group uh, we this uh, i was present in the breakout room and there was a lot of discussion which went on uh, regarding these three issues and i request uh, dr ali abuddin i think uh, uh, are, yes. are you going to uh, present yes thank you thank you yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, hello to all, and thank you for uh, uh, making me present. And thank you. Uh, happy to be with you on this uh, webinar. Uh, it's uh, mentoring is an important issue, and the scenario uh, set uh, a real uh, issue is how to uh, to to how can student emotion be dealt with. We discuss and and such issue this issue in the in the in our small group. uh how to uh, the confidentiality how to deal with them it's uh, it needs uh, some experience the issue is uh, is new even some many mentors uh, have problems how to to deal with the, with electronics how to deal with the students emotions how to deal with under confidentiality uh, the the most raised issue is the how to keep them motivated Uh, it's 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 not an easy issue uh, on online. It needs an an uh, uh, some 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 uh, moderator or mentor that can uh, uh, can uh, deal with them carefully. 
uh, how he, he, he can um, share the participation of most or all uh, participants. It's not an, an easy issue, especially if we rush into the, the e-learning. E uh, our professor, uh, Dr. Shabih Zaidi, uh, raised a, a new issue, which is the moral trauma caused by the, the COVID-19. Uh, COVID uh, it's, it's, it might cause uh, such trauma like like a, a trauma uh, psychological trauma happened to to soldiers in armies or when it turned back uh, uh, especially the uh, an, an issue which I for first time uh, I uh, I noticed or hear it actually uh, uh, also, so emotions of students should be dealt carefully, especially they are uh, adults. Uh, they need to the environment, the learning environment, need to be uh, from the first sessions how to to make uh, assurance to put rules to rules when to to want to speak, when to listen, uh, to assure that uh, may have some breaks in between. Uh, the freedom to talk and should assure the confidentiality. So the, uh, the mentor should assure uh, to be to put uh, guidelines, rules to follow during the sessions. That will will help for regarding the uh, the uh, the the first point. The second point, as I think, is the uh, how can the mentee be kept motiv the motivated? This is an a difficult issue. Also, it needs uh, an, an, a good, uh, a, a good observe, a good communication, communication and experience in in, e, in 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 using electronic for, for, from the mentor side. Uh, so to keep them motivated, he should ask question and let them uh, be free uh, to to ask question. Uh, how can man help mentees to achieve their learning goals? Also, this is an, the third point, which is also. Uh, need uh, it need I think many mentors, many teachers, many uh, tutors or whatever we call them moderators need to 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 be trained well or have practice more regarding e-learning because we as uh, tutors as mentors uh, we have many problems in this issue we we are not. Uh, many of us, it's just maybe first time to be on e-learning, on using Zoom and such programs, which, which is would be difficult maybe for the mentors more than the mentee. Maybe the students have more experience than the mentors uh, in using the electronics uh, regarding uh, this uh, issue. But it, it's all are important points need to be uh, dealt from the tutor or mentor side uh, to be considered to be motivated otherwise they, the students may be uh, not there just open the, the the open the screen and they they not not listening or uh, seeing anything just uh, maybe uh, busy with other issues or games or just go away thank you thank you dr ali uh, no, the discussion was wonderful and you have touched upon many many points in this a uh, few more additions I would like to make. Uh, as we see, uh, see from this particular scenario, the mentors themselves are uh, distressed and they are uh, worried and therefore uh, reassuring the faculty who is mentoring, uh, that is also very, very essential. Means they have to say, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Dr. Munira has to convince them that mentoring is a normal thing to do in this area. It may be done slightly differently, as we have said, and so we discussed during uh, this uh, in the breakout room that there should be direct interaction with the mentees, whichever way, and it is not just direct, it should be continued and repeated uh, interaction. The, as you rightly said, the emotions are difficult, uh, but there should be psychosocial support should be given to them, em showing them empathy and understanding that we are with them is uh, again very important. And whenever the, we said that there could be suicidal cases also with the isolation and all. And therefore, in this particular thing, ra rather than just one-to-one -one mentioning, sometimes the, having a team mentioning with a professional help, a counselor involved in it will be because we may not be able to identify those students. 
The second thing is for the motivation. One of the things which we felt that uh, we, we have to help them of, uh, generate ideas because and we can offer them a few ideas and then with the ideas they can create choices and then that can build some confidence and creativity. So it need not be always the academic thing. We can discuss about the other thing. Uh, as you rightly said, the mentors themselves are not so familiar with this e-technology, but our mentees are. And here is the case, we can indulge them into reverse mentoring. Mentors, um, our mentees training us, uh, the mentor, to how to use this MOOC or other uh, uh, video making and something else so that uh, they feel uh, that now they are a uh, little powerful and that can build up their uh, confidence. There is, I read somewhere that uh, one can use a scaling tool. The scaling tool is a tool like zero to 10. And then you can ask your mentee where you are, whether you are towards zero or whether it is two, three, four, and discuss with them the options. If he says uh, or she says I'm towards zero, then uh, what factors prevented you going to the negative side? And what factors you are thinking can be helpful to you to come to policy. So a lot of discussion and that's why the time involvement has to be there. And for the learning goals, we said that uh, there has to be some rules and uh, my, how to use mics and how to uh, break, uh, give breaks in the lecture and all. But perhaps we may have to uh, reduce, uh, talk to them, prioritize, uh, redefine their uh, learning goals also and uh, try to make it a small chunk given over a period because they have to do a lot of, sometimes some uh, students who are not in the hostel, they may be at home and they will be busy with their home activity, their parents may be ill. So there are many things can be there simultaneously. So we have to see to it that, what, and it is a dialogue, it is a communication with them that will help. So we can reduce the goal and what they can do easily and then slowly rebuild it. So prioritization, redefining and working with them. So with some action plan will be useful. And many of us as Madam uh, Parzana said earlier that they have gone home without books. So they may not be having resources. So we have to ensure that we can give some uh, resources, uh, provide some resources for them. Uh, with, uh, with this, uh, should we go to the next scenario? Add, do I have permission for 30 seconds only? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Just yes, to dilate sure. upon this new concept that's come up uh, on the moral trauma of the mentor. I'm more concerned about Dr. Munira because uh, she, <laughs> yeah, in this scenario, because yes. if she feels that after all the effort she has failed to deliver the mm. goods, the moral trauma that she'll carry on her conscience so that all teachers know is going to be awesome. And I think we have to give it a thought that it's not just the mentee, yes. it is also the mentors who suffer. Yes. And they're suffering yes. because of COVID era. I gave an example like Abu Tahim just mentioned about the, the um, psychological trauma that soldiers suffer when they come back from these yes, uh, very unnecessary true. war, yeah. unnecessary wars. They go to distant areas, kill people and come back. They're never normal. They have a lot of post-stress trauma disorders, but this moral conscience, moral trauma is overbearing and they do not have a normal life. So I'm more concerned about Dr. Munira here. Thank you. <laughs> well said, Dr. Well said, well said. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, going to the next scenario, that is case scenario three, uh, the scenario, uh, this is the, pre uh, I think presenter for this group is Dr. Uh, Meda. I know, uh, I will just read the scenario for others. Uh, an email was uh, uh, sent by pharmacology postgraduate student to the HOD requesting for some online seminars and journal club. Uh, they assured that in spite of uh, COVID-19 duties, at least 50% students can attend at a given time. The HOD to, uh, conducted meeting with faculty member to discuss um, alteration in the program. And uh, she encouraged the faculty to think about the innovative ideas that could benefit the students to evolve as professionals and benefit the majority of the postgraduates. So the faculty did a lot of brainstorming and many ideas emerged. 
the question was can we contribute to the brainstorming and suggest innovation that may be beneficial to postgraduate students of any health profession course they need not be pharmacologists that we should give idea th uh, thoughts to uh, to be applied for any postgraduate and what challenges do you envisage in the planning and implementation during this period so over to dr meeda uh, we in our group uh, we faced the same problem that most of the most of us face in the classroom that uh, not many of uh, my co participants were willing to come forward and i think that is one of the major challenges that we would face this i am touching upon the question number 2 the major challenges that would be faced is that uh, uh, if the students do not come forward so to participate we thought uh, one of the ideas that we could give was uh, have webinars like this so that majority of the students can attend even if they are on the covid duty and if they are a little off duty they can use their uh, phones and things and at uh, take part part in the webinars and discussions but the main thing would be that how to involve all these uh, postgraduate students in actively participating in these discussions so one of the ways that we could do is to uh, distribute the work to each of them suppose it's a seminar involve more students in presentation so that each one has uh, Uh, to get to the uh, couple of uh, topics to present maybe each student can be given a peer mentor or it could be a senior person who can contribute to whatever the presentation is going to be so there could be a one to one peer mentoring of, of discussions between the peer and presentation similarly there could be a mentor uh, or there could be a senior person who would be allocated for the webinars and who could help the students to come up with the presentations and uh, uh, journal club the second uh, problem we thought we the, they would face would be uh, getting the journals the latest articles maybe for journal presentation or if they are doing seminars getting a proper uh, cross referencing for books get because they are all gone back home or they are in the hospital getting uh, reading material would be a difficult thing so that's where again the faculty could be of help they could uh, try to get some e material or if they can contribute or they can share their material with the student that would be helpful uh, these are the two main things that we found the in the planning maybe timing because if they are on the covid duty then getting them all together would be a problem and uh, in, in implementation if the students do not come forward and contribute it would be uh, very difficult to organize such uh, problem uh, such events that was what uh, uh, two of us discussed in the meet group our group thanks uh, dr neema Uh, th thank you so much uh, i agree with you regarding the problems because the attendance may be poor they may not be motivated there may be problems with networking also means uh, internet connections and all they uh, they are not uh, good i know uh, as you said that uh, the peer mentors may uh, help rather than uh, uh, no other uh, type of mentor uh, we have some uh, uh, a few additional things like uh, uh, what uh, uh, suggestions can be given that uh, we can invest during this period on their personality development as well and uh, along with the professional development this is a chance where whether we can get on this virtual meetings the role models in the field uh, so uh, that uh, we can uh, we have to do i know you know we can discuss uh, one on one to one discussions can be on their research topic the they will not be able to do their dissertation the research or what they are doing but we can invest that time in the literature review if they can or they can write start writing something 
uh, or those who have uh, almost near the completion, how to write it or pay, writing paper, something uh, they, they will be able to do. The programs, what we are doing, if it is a, a synchronous in the form of the module, then perhaps that will help the others. Those who are on duty, they will be able to attend uh, later on. So no, no, one has to think about, and whatever is the, the writing proposals for the grants or maybe submission uh, for this ECs, because some of the ECs have started now working uh, uh, online. So no, that also can be uh, done. But uh, this has to be always done uh, uh, in co communication with the students. Then only it will uh, go on. Uh, thank you so much. Can I add? Uh, yeah, some, yeah, sure. Something on it. Uh, thanks. I am Dr. Oscar. Uh, yeah. For the second point, what challenges do you envisage in the planning and implementation of the classes? So, uh, according to the scenario. Yeah, they want to uh, learn the things which are the deficient uh, left in their syllabus, not for the behavior. So, uh, and this is the class uh, uh, they are planning to implement. So the most important five things they should uh, face, that is the availability of the multimedia, availability of the internet facility, Zoom link, or Microsoft training, or timetable, fixed timings, and uh, separate class uh, uh, for this internet. Uh, that is most important for the planning and implementation of the classes during this period. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the action. Uh, le let's go to the next scenario, case scenario four. And uh, may I know the presenter, Dr. Dr. Omar? Yes, Dr. Ammar. Yeah, uh, uh, so now the case scenario is like that the mentorship uh, program was recently initiated in the medical school and there was hurried distribution of the students amongst the faculty who showed interest in the program and many submitted their names just to be on the right side of the management. So Dr. Smith uh, was a, a GI surgeon and he was assigned five students as a mentor. He invited the mentees in his usual pompous way to have a dinner at a local club and impressed the UG by the clout he wills and they look forward to more interaction. And then this COVID pandemic struck. So the mentees tried to call him, but the calls went unanswered. One mentee, Raj, is undergoing trying times trying to adjust to the new system, but not available. Uh, the, Dr. Smith was not available despite many calls from the Raj friends and fellow mentees. And then the, when the student feedback uh, came, it reflected disappointment and loss of trust uh, in the program. So the question was, what, uh, what is the problem and what advice would you give to the authorities? Um, <clears throat> thank you, doctor. Um, Regarding the first question, we um, we discussed this, and the main the main problem of the scenario is that the mentor is not accessible for the mentees. Um, so, regarding the advice to give to the authority, first of all, we need to know the reason why the mentor is not um, accessible. Is he not interested in mentoring mentorship, or uh, is he not motivated, or not skilled, or he have a technology problem? Um, after that, we need to review the mentorship program, uh, whether there is a protected time for, men, uh, for mentoring, uh, whether there are um, reminders to meet with the, with the mentees, whether there are, there are scheduled meetings. Um, also, we thought about that uh, maybe they need to develop a faculty development program uh, to, to educate them or to, to develop their skills in mentorship. Um, maybe we need to put evaluations um, to the mentors by the, men by the mentees. Um, also, maybe the, the number of mentees is too, too, uh, too large for one mentor, which is five, five mentees in this, uh, in this scenario. Um, maybe we need to make sure uh, about the willingness or readiness of each mentor before they join the program. 
um, they need proper guidance for both the mentors and the mentees. Uh, one of the uh, also interesting idea is to match the mentees to, uh, to the mentors according to their interest. And maybe we, we need to provide some intensive or incentives, I mean, or linking um, the mentorship to promotion of the mentors in the future. Wonderful, That's wonderful. We have, you have covered whatever the points we had. We just want to say that each way it happens, the mentorship, as you said, that the program selection of the mentor, it's not uh, appropriate. And we have to have the review the program or evaluate the program properly and plan it. Uh, and it happens in many cases, it, uh, not just in the COVID era, but uh, we have seen the pro programs failing because of uh, such type of uh, mentors who uh, you know, where their uh, mentor's responsibility is not understood uh, by them. And maybe in such cases, the team mentoring, where there is an inexperienced mentor is there, but can have a team of experienced and inexperienced mentors so that uh, apart from the uh, separate you know, program for me uh, to hone the skills for the mentors, they, that uh, solution may also help. Uh, thank you so much. Thank and anyone else, uh, anyone else wants to have uh, add something? Or we, uh, we will move to the next scenario and uh, Dr. Sucheta will. Uh... <clears throat> The next scenario is uh, Irfan, John, and Medha are three mentees assigned to you. Mentorship program is six years old, and you as a mentor have been mentoring three students every year since its inception. There is a timetable that is drawn for regular meetings with the mentees, and they have been enjoying being a mentor. During COVID, you are trying to adjust to remote work and online communication with the mentees. Medha has not answered your phone calls or text messages. Though, though you do see her online, but she keeps her video off and the microphone muted. Irfan and John respond to your messages. However, you are told that they are missing several assignment admission submissions. What is the problem? Comment on the approaches to resolve the issue with Medha. What mentorship skills should be adopted for the other two mentees, Irfan and <clears throat> John? So we have here, I think, Atif, who will uh, present. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Atif. Thank uh, you, so Dr. Regarding, the, uh, regarding the scenario, I just make some summary. So the one mentor have a three mentees. Okay, in which Irfan and John and Mehta. So the problem is that it is a six years old program and every year they have a three, three students every year. So it, maybe it's a possibility that every year you get a new students and then suddenly COVID starts. So your repo may be not developed with the students. This is the one thing. Mm. Second thing is that there are two problems. Two students are responding but not submitting the assignments. That means they are not submitting the assignment on time. Other mm -hmm. problem with the Meta is that she is not responding at all to the mentor. So for me, there are two problems related to the Meta. One, and Irfan and John, we, who are not submitting the assignment. And the third problem, which I think it is on the behalf of mentor, that when the mentee is not responding to the mentor, the mentor think, okay, I will not, contact him he's not responding to me at all so here at this yes here this is the most important thing is that that the mentor and mentee both know their sense uh, their sense of responsibility that means to run this uh, uh, mentorship program the both are responsible okay this is yes, the problem yes so true okay the second thing is that comment on approaches to resolve the issue with the meda the biggest problem is that she is not responding at all with your calls or messages. Mm -hmm. So first thing I will try, I will communicate with their class representative that yeah. as a mentor, I want to meet her first step. Second step, because she's attending the classes, she is there. I will try to reach the class, uh, the teacher of the class that she will, they will give me some time at the end of the lecture so I can talk to her. Mm -hmm. Number third, I will go to the my head of the department or a particular person to 
talk to her maybe she is not responding to me because of any reasons okay <laughs> so true so yes true. yes fourth thing <laughs> i will try i will try to go through the social media maybe she is using the social media and she is not responding to other things this is the way i will try to reach her because the most important thing how to reach her to bring her and talk mm. to her and the fourth thing which is uh, uh, not prevalent in other places but like maybe the gender issue i am male and mm. she's a female you don't maybe like to share <laughs> share the things okay yes. now come to the third point what mentorship skill should be adopted for the other two mentees in foreign job the problem is that we have to call them individually and we have to talk to them that what is the actual problem why they are not submitting the assignment on the time on the basis of that we have to decide our role maybe they don't have enough time to to submit the assignment or maybe uh, they have the problem in in the e learning that they are not able to use the the online things how to submit mm -hmm. it so our role is becoming different on 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 depending on their problems so maybe sometimes we are the supporter we are the counselors or guider or maybe the troubleshooter depending on what is the problem they have uh, thank you so much uh, this is the thing we discussed <laughs> so nice i i think you covered all the points that we had and yes peer education uh, reverse mentoring uh, try to look at what is their problem also or ask them also to you know to to let us know what is wrong so that we can mentor we can improve our uh, skills as well and uh, of course the skills of communication and uh, we have to show extra patience and empathy is there yeah. anyone else in the in the audience who would like to uh, add some more to this if not we can go to the next sentence uh, maybe she had a covid problem maybe madhya this uh, girl have the yes. um, uh, covid problem covid problem mm. she suffered yes. from covid and uh, she maybe maybe it can be the uh, some illness because yes. it is a uh, outbreak of the covid yeah and also she may be undergoing some kind of a emotional burden you know she may be just exactly. overwhelmed by loneliness and uh, that has uh, you know st started these personal issues and she just has gone into a shell and that is why the approaches uh, uh, you know articulated by dr atif are so important that we should try all means to approach her and uh, get her out of this shell so uh, thank you so much everyone uh, for your uh, inputs we now move on to the uh, the last case of the day uh this is scenario 6 dr ibrahim is a brilliant research worker and hod and he encourages a department to get a research grant he calls for a departmental meeting to discuss research pr proposal with the faculty the, and delegates responsibilities according to the faculty capabilities dr aditi who is a professor is asked to prepare the budget dr jack the lecturer is asked to do a literature survey Dr Aziz who is an associate professor is asked to be a co-investigator through an e-group the faculty discussed the issues on a common platform just as they were going to send the proposal the lockdown is announced everything gets halted and realizing this may go on for a very long time Dr Ibrahim calls up the institute authorities and requests for an e-submission of the proposal and an e-scrutiny also for an online meeting to project his defense um his persistent pays off and the department manages to get the grant so this in a way is a happy situation but we would still like you to comment on the approaches taken which you consider positive and what mentoring skills have been demonstrated here and uh, we would uh, request i think uh, dr alia is was there in this group dr alia we somehow could not uh, you know have some person who would take the onus of presenting it presenting this is there anyone else who was in this uh, in this room who would like to present is dr alia with us 
yeah dr alia was here i did see her uh, i'm not sure whether she's still here all right so yeah uh, let me just i can't see her anymore she might have uh, been disconnected okay yeah but, uh, but uh, could anyone from the audience opine on this should i show you the the scene the scenario it's a win win situation in a way so, so what do you make of uh -huh. the positive yes. approach by uh, shown by the dr ibrahim is that he knows yes. the importance of uh, uh, that project for the students yes. well Welfare and for the institution welfare, he wants Great. to get it uh, on priority basis, and uh, he resolved this issue by providing uh, alternative uh, suggestion how it can be approved and how it can be done. So it is the um, brilliantly skilled uh, Dr. Ibrahim uh, capacity uh, that he uh, uh, improved his. Uh, Uh, proposal uh, in the way uh, through email and got um, uh, approval of this that is remarkable and i too i would like to add here that this was excellent teamwork and uh, did you notice that there was no hierarchy uh, every people were chosen according to their uh, capability and of course as you rightly said sir that uh, the perseverance and persistence of dr ibrahim paid off in the end so with that thank you so much we move on to uh, the rest of the webinar and i invite uh, neema to do so um before we uh, proceed to this i would just like to clap clap for all the presenters and all those who are who were involved in the discussion the leaders everyone so well presented now uh, through this uh, very uh, scenarios what we wanted to point out that what are the common problems faced we touch upon the in covid 19 pandemic and as all of you know that our uh, academic teaching has got significantly modified or suspended there is an incredible uncertainty there is a disconnection and high level of anxiety in both mentors as well as mentee there is a lack of focus on uh, or productivity and all experiences everyone must be having it we are finding it difficult to navigate in this transition period and this uh, this has affected our mentoring relationship we are finding our mentees as demotivated with reduced participation we are finding difficulties in communication from our usual so face to face communication suddenly we are forced into virtual space and uh, many of our mentors are finding also that there is a imbalance home life and work life they are mentors are stressed and burn out because they are doing hectic duties there are multiple duties during this covid uh, 19 situation and the, as a result of that maybe perhaps our the mentees are also finding that uh, they are getting discouraged that the mentorship program which was running earlier they are thinking that uh, they it is uh, ineffective i know uh, what emerged from our uh, discussion like earlier i said the mentee have to be take the initiative but now the role has changed mentor have to be more proactive we should re, re, reaffirm con contact with our mentees and we should adapt to the current needs of the mentees and for this we may have to act beyond set boundaries we have to be re, uh, responsive to the mentees uh, concerns and these concerns are not just the academic concern but also about the health feeling of isolation housing family we don't know about that meda what was the problem or travel may our students come from different states different country food access insecurity etc etc and we have to acknowledge their problem we can't fix their problems but we have to remember that but if possible because we have a lot of uh, contacts we are uh, more uh, mature than them we may point out to some resources or support for them and we have to review regarding their academic thing we have to review as we discussed earlier previous learning goals redefine them prioritize them and focus on the smaller more manageable task 
we have to engage them in alternate uh, activities and these activities need not be always scientific it could be non scientific maybe something social maybe something cultural we may have to meet them over a cup of coffee at individual places or celebrate their birthdays online and use some innovative ways as well what we can do over this is to strengthen our human and empathetic bonds in this relationship and invest time in personal uh, personality development that's all we can do and we would like to share our uh, uh, experiences from india uh, regarding uh, this uh, mentorship program uh, dr suchit we also want to uh, uh, listen professor dr mulazim san bukhari uh, yes. nice words uh, he is the best mentor uh, in uh, south punjab so i will request that he finally should comment some words yeah we yeah, will sure. give time also yes we will we, we will get uh, we have kept some time for that, that. sir so uh, this is our story and i would like to share our experiences from india at the said gs medical college and km hospital we started a mentorship program in 1991 we gave it, gave it a name an india uh, an, a name called shidori and it was involved uh, you know it's a marathi name it's uh, it's in the local language so that children the students who came from the region could relate with it it is a tiffin that is given by the mother when the child goes on a long journey so our shidori to our students was this food for thought during his journey in the medical career along with the preceptors we have the associate preceptors who were the immediate senior batch so they uh, acted as a liaison between the student and the preceptors so in 1991 and 1992 we had the shidori in 2002 we established a parent teacher cell so that the parents also became a part of our system and they were you know uh, uh, they were uh, invited to talk to us and uh, we used emails uh, because of the distances not all parents could travel but we had a way of connect with them and 2009 we had a student welcome function and we started with what was known as the aroha and in 2010 we had the establishment of a magazine called drishti drishti is vision in uh, in hindi or in marathi it's called uh, vision and that is the vision of our uh, first year students they came out with what was the, what turned out to be like a yearbook where all the rules the anti ragging rules and uh, whatever uh, that the that had to be you know known or propagated to the students were all put into them into that booklet by the students themselves so it became their uh, work of creativity and this has honed us right up to 2020 when the pandemic hit us and uh, it sort of helped the keep the connect and we we found that it was we were able to hold to take this culture of um, like being together uh, forward and that is the reason why it helped us uh, uh, and uh, go a long way at eras uh you know we have a mentorship program already in place but suddenly the students were were, were asked to go home and most of us uh, in fact all of us thought that they were going to be away only for 15 days so we said just take whatever you can in a bag and go away and as as dr farzana rightly said in the beginning this weeks turned to months and uh, we were really worried about their mental health and that is when we thought you know we chanced upon these uh, seven dimensions of wellness that we sort of took up and uh, we decided to make a questionnaire and we also tried to talk and we made the mentors talk to their mentees online you know as the classes were going on or when we were breaking them up into small groups for vibes the mentors would talk to their uh, mentees and they would ask them are you getting enough exercise are you moving are you uh, seeing that you are physically fit are you looking after your back are you taking a walk are you giving your eyes a rest all these small questions were asked by the mentors and i'm telling you it worked wonders because most of the students then started feeling oh my god they do care for us they've not just thrown us out of the campus just because of this uh, covid 19 
then we talked about their occupational wellness. We said, are you worried that you may never ever see a patient in the ward again? And uh, don't worry about this. Uh, why don't you switch off? Uh, why don't you, uh, you know, why, why don't we hone your clinical skills or show you uh, so, some clinical skill that we can show you on, online? And why don't you try using it on your grandmother at home? Uh, you know, just simple history taking skills. So that is how we honed their occupational trauma that they may have. As far as their emotional health was concerned, um, you know, they, they were distraught. And, uh, and just speaking to the students helped us and helped them also. Um, when it came to the academics or the intellectual well-being, I'm telling you their books were not there. They had nothing with them because they just walked out of their rooms locking them. So we then sent them PDF versions of their uh, textbooks. And we also gave them handouts for all the lectures that were there. We even put up the recordings of our uh, Zoom classes, which they, could, uh, we, which they could listen to in an asynchronous manner. We then asked them to think out of the box, to look beyond themselves. We said, look out, see how people are working, see how people are taking care of their environment. You also take care of your environment by switching off the apps that are distracting you. So the E environment also, we ask them to take care of. And then we also looked at the spiritual bit. Uh, we did not, uh, you know, go, I mean, we knew that the temples, the mosques, the gurudwaras, the churches, they were all closed. So, uh, so we didn't, uh, you know, look at it from uh, this angle of uh, making them go uh, to, uh, to places of worship. But we just said, we taught you to do yoga um, in the foundation course. We taught you to just meditate. And why don't you try and take this up and take this forward? And last but not the least, we told them to get in touch with their friends. Talk, study with them online and uh, be a part of the group. And we not only said, get in touch with your friends, but we said, get in touch with the old, get in touch with your grandparents, find out how they are doing, tell them to be careful. And why, why did we say this? And we told them that you are doctors in the making and it is your responsibility to see that your near and dear ones are also safe and feel connected with you too. So that is so important that, uh, and I'm telling you all this worked uh, a lot for all of us at ERAS and, um, uh, and it helped. So now we would like to hear your story. What have you done uh, besides what we have told you or you know, even what we have done, we would like you to reiterate that yes, this worked for us too. So I would like a few people from the audience to uh, let us know. And of course we can have uh, whoever uh, needs to talk about. So this is our chance to, your chance to let us know. Yeah, and, and if the others uh, are not able to talk or, or due to uh, some um, uh, network issues, you could put it in the chat box. Shifa and, uh, is going to put it all and collate it together. And then we will try and send you a mail about what all everyone is doing as far as mentorism is concerned. Let us all learn from each other. So over to all of you. <laughs> I want. Yes, sir. Yes. Who who's there? Uh, I'm, I'm. Are you listening me? Yes. 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 Can you yes, can you just uh, tell me who tell us who you are? Please introduce yourself. Yes, ma'am. I'm Imran Khalid, and. Uh, Yes, ma'am. I am Dr. Yes. Imran. Yes, yes. Please say, yes. Yes. tell us what you've done. So, uh, this, we ask a question the question of uh, mentor, extrinsic motivation mentor can be increased. Someone told and uh, shared their experience that uh, some incentives. 
there and say, uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Khalid, your voice is clear. Uh, Dr. Khalid, can you put it in the chat box? Because your, uh, your voice is cracking. Yeah, uh, there's some connectivity issue, for, uh, maybe. So we are not able to hear you clearly. Earlier there was a request. Yes, some Dr. Bukhara. Uh, Bukhari. Bukhari, Dr. Bukhari. Bukhari. <coughs> we would like to hear from you, please, sir. And then uh, Dr. Mirza Karar Ali has also unmuted. Yes. Uh, may I speak here? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, webinar. It was indeed a, a very useful webinar for us uh, uh, on the days and the months of COVID and uh, uh, pertaining to what problems we faced uh, during our lecturing time in the times of COVID were very enormous indeed. Uh, in the beginning, as uh, Madam rightly pointed out, uh, we thought it will just be for about two or three weeks uh, uh, lockdown, but eventually it continued for so many long, so many months. Even now, we are in lockdown, uh, where we take our classes online. Uh, there are a lot of challenges for the faculty uh, lecturing the students. Uh, uh, we would say that we did not perhaps did every justification to the students uh, that we are supposed to do it when we have physical classes. Uh, in the beginning, uh, one of the points uh, that uh, we, one of the discussion that we had uh, in today's scenario was the privacy of the students. Uh, many students did have the objection that we did not want our faces and our, uh, our video to be on. Uh, and uh, then eventually we said, yes, okay, we could take a request and we put the videos off uh, where the faculty only spoke to the students. But then we also uh, lost the opportunity of getting the uh, attention of the students. Sometimes students would just put the television, uh, put the uh, Zoom uh, app on, and they were perhaps not there. So, uh, so that was also a, a challenging uh, a task for the for the teachers who were teaching uh, uh, the students. Uh, plus, there were also challenges with respect to the conducting the examinations. The the uh, it was very difficult to conduct an exam or. On an online basis, where everything was new for most of us, and uh, and hopefully we'll be out of this lockdown soon. And uh, yeah. right, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank so, you, uh, so is uh, Dr. Bukhari there? So should we then uh, continue? <clears throat> um, Dr. Bukhari is here. Uh, Dr. Bukhari, if you can please unmute your mic. I'm not sure if Dr. Okay. Bukhari uh, is listening to us. All right. <laughs> so then I'll continue with uh, what I have to say. Thank you so much for that uh, addition to the to you know all the problems that we've been facing and how we've been taking care of them but for anything that we do uh, we we need to uh, evaluate any program and that is why uh, learning contracts is one way that in which you know self evaluation can be done with the help of the strengths and the areas of improvement that can be done and between the mentee and the mentor we need to uh, define a realistic goal which needs to be achieved and then uh, they have to set a goal as to how it will be achieved and then what assistance uh, is needed. So, so the mentee and the mentor both ha have to be aware of what is the assistance that is required and there has to be a timeline. So in what, how much time will be I able to achieve it? And that is the reason why this learning contract, if it is put, if things or answers to these questions are put in, uh, we, we will be able to evaluate how well things are going on with the help of this grid. You can also rate yourself as a mentor. And there are, you know, if you Google uh, self-assessment forms for being a good mentor, or for that matter, for being a good mentee, 
you will find hundreds of forms and many, many universities have made their own, uh, you know, uh, with uh, small adaptations. And you will note, this is one form that I have picked up, uh, but uh, I'm sure you can, you, you can see so many uh, and uh, we can modify them and tweak them as per our requirement. And uh, of course, always uh, give uh, the person, you know, from where you have adapted uh, the, the benefit of being acknowledged. So uh, that is the way to do things. And uh, yeah, you could always work towards, you know, making your own self-assessment form in your own system. Uh, I would like to now just, you know, once more sort of summarize and let you know about the mentoring cycle. Nima has already talked about it. Uh, Dr. Farzana also has mentioned it. We all have, uh, you know, in, in passing, but this is now consolidating what a mentoring cycle is made up of. We have phase one, which will clarify the ex expectations where both mentee and mentor will build a rapport and they will uh, contra, you know, have a proper contract contracting between themselves so that they sort of set a goal. Once that happens, you enter into a phase two, which is the productive phase, which will then have a direction setting and you start making progress and you keep reporting the progress that is happening. And then finally, you have a phase three, which is the maturation where this relationship matures and comes either to a closure or it goes on to raising the bar and going on ahead. There are two things that we need to look at it, you know, when this whole towards the completion of the cycle, is it working for us or is it not working for us? In a way, it is like a marriage, you know, you try to find out what is going wrong and you try to uh, make amends and work towards seeing that it works. So that is, that is the idea that has to be inculcated as far as the mentoring is, uh, goes and you need to see that this works. With that, if we think of any mentorship program, we have a mentorship program on paper. Yes. However, what happens in practice is something different altogether. So if you have three uh, dimensions to any program, on paper, you have one program. In practice, you have another program. And then there is the hidden curriculum, which is already there in place, in the subconscious. What is the hidden curriculum? It is the processes, pressures and constraints which fall outside of these two on paper and in practice curriculum. It is one of the ways we impact the subconscious of the system. It is the culture of the institution. It is the environment. So it is the take home message that the students take and it is the perception of the students. And that is what we need to be very careful about because whatever said and done, the curriculum on paper, the curriculum in practice and the hidden curriculum, they should ideally be stacked one on top of the other and they should all be concomitant. But in real life, let me tell you, it rarely ever happens, but we have to be very open to this. With that, I now invite Dr. Farzana to, to have the last word and to give her summary. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, Dr. Farzana, may, may I ask a question um, if I'm allowed yeah. to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to know what is the most important aspect of mentor mentee relationship? I think so. It is the trust building. The trust building okay. and the perseverance right. and, uh, you know, of course, the time element is also the most important because the mentor should be able to devote time. Otherwise, uh, in most of the cases, uh, that is one of, uh, one of the reasons why, why this mentorship program fails, as per my knowledge. Right, thank Whatever you. Whatever we have. So, so now, uh, is there anything else? Uh, because I have Dr. Neema, Dr. Sucheta, these are my teachers. And now we are, we are these are my mentors and now mm -hmm. I am, now uh, we are working together. Mentoring. Now <laughs> ma'am says that it is peer mentoring. Learning from we are learning from each other. 
so it is continuing so thank you very much uh, dr sucheta and dr neema uh, it has been uh, a very fruitful i'm sure it must have been a fruitful uh, discussion for all the participants and as uh, i had said earlier that uh, these kind of sessions not only uh, gives gives us a chance to share our knowledge but it gives us a platform to learn from uh, other participants who are coming from different backgrounds uh, they are coming from different uh, regions and uh, they have their own kind of setups so we this is a give and take kind of a message so in the end what i would say that what has worked well for us i would say that the mentorship program which was being uh, what which was in place when we tried to review it in the covid era and we tried to discuss with uh, you know at times uh, with with our faculty members with the students the stakeholders so what i think that the stakeholders here are the faculty members the students and sometimes in rare cases it is uh, you know the parents also since the students were at home there were times when we could not uh, figure out what was happening and uh, there were certain if there were certain issues we even talked to the tried to talk to the parents so these three with these three st stakeholders when they were in we were in talking we tried to exchange our views and come to a common platform as to what and when and how should be done and we tried to improvise our teaching and training programs with the inputs given by the students by the faculty members and we were able to achieve uh, whatever uh, we had thought uh, we could but uh, at uh, on the other side since ours was a tertiary hospital it is a tertiary hospital and uh, the government had uh, given it uh, uh, you know assigned it to level 3 covid uh, only covid uh, hospital um, in our city of lucknow uh, it is in uttar pradesh northern india so uh, uh, with so much uh, you know uh, responsibility given to us we were able to sail through it although in the beginning there were issues there were lot of problems but then one to one talk and trying to uh, you know clear all the doubts uh, and having the induction programs having the uh, you know uh, we tried to design oski for uh, you know uh, you know donning and doffing of the pp kits uh, personal protection uh, this gear and uh, trying to bring in the student counselor time and again whenever there was an issue some student or some you know a pg student or some nursing uh, you know uh, person or from pharmacy or from other you know groups was not um, very uh, confident enough we tried to counsel them give them enough training and once we started with the training program we found that uh, the residents were very confident and uh, by the grace of god what we have achieved during this uh, pandemic Uh, was uh, is it is evident as you all can see and uh, just in this month uh, of november uh, the governor of uttar pradesh here you can see in the first photograph she is a lady she is giving uh, us you know uh, she recognized uh, our college uh, in the hospital facilities as one of the best uh, in lucknow city which was really a matter of pride and not only that there were other achievements and you know accolades which we got not only from the uh, you know from the government but also from the relatives of the patients who were admitted and patients themselves were happy and they really thanked and blessed our uh, staff our doctors our team and uh, so in the end we i would say that since we changed our model since we went into look into the other aspects and we tried to uh, bring every all the stakeholders on the platform and have a exchange of ideas because they were the ones who were going inside and they were doing the duties so they they knew certain things which we were we were not aware or for that matter 
uh, during the you know their their classes online classes what issues they had so with these all these things together i think so we have traveled enough uh, you know and uh, we are satisfied but it's a long way for all of us so with your inputs from uh, so many inputs which we got and uh, we can still go on our this journey to fight with this pandemic till um, so uh, so what we can in the end say that uh, mentoring uh, does matter so thank you very much once again to all of you for uh, staying uh, connected and thank you shifa dr tabassum and of course dr zaidi uh, for giving us this platform thank you very much once again over to you over to tabassum um, dr tabassum yeah. thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr farzana dr suchita and dr nima um wonderful presentations wonderful cases i think uh, the cases uh, made a lot of sense and they were all related to you know real life uh, scenarios and uh, uh, the participants uh, i'm sure uh, were engaged and you know they got to understand a lot of thing out of uh, the issues that those that, that were highlighted in those scenarios and we also learned a lot um so thank you all and uh, in the end i would also like to thank uh, uh the audience the participants uh who have joined and you know who interacted and uh, uh noted down their thoughts and shared their experiences so it has been a wonderful uh, sharing of experiences as well for all of us and uh, thank you for the organizers um shifa for being up in the us and you know uh taking the lead for the organizing this uh, workshop and uh, Uh, of course uh, the entire sibu team so thank you all and um, with this we conclude this session um, i am sure uh, shifa there would be some feedback form that will be circulated to the uh, participants uh, would, this will be circulated on the email or how are you going to circulate this yes so the um, feedback form as well as the certificates um, the code to download your certificates will be emailed to you um and again uh, thank you everyone for joining um just as a last note please join us um next week uh the same time on December 12th um for our next event um which will be a webinar hosted with Dr. Alison Ledger of Lead Institute of Medical Education on getting started in medical education research um so please um keep your uh eyes out for that and um and thank you everyone for joining um and on behalf of the entire SIVU team uh, Dr. Farzana and Dr. Sucheta and Dr. Nirmala thank you for your time today and and we really hope to get you um uh, hopefully invite you to come back again very soon thank you and i would like to thank uh, my team uh, especially Dr. Anuja Dr. Zeba Dr. Sonia for being part of the team and uh, trying to uh, you know put together the program thank you very much Yeah. Thank, thank you so much thank you all and, uh, thank you shifa so again inshallah okay bye pleasure. thank bye -bye. you awesome. okay thank, thank you, you. bye bye thank you thank you thank you bye